Weldy. I'm from Maniac, Pennsylvania. However, I'm still crazy after all these beers. Gary Monterosso, I'm in Philadelphia. You know what, this is a remarkable event, the 14th annual Sippin' by the River. It's a charity event for the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America. And I gotta tell you something, I'm walking over here and I'm seeing some beers in can. Archie Knight from Oscar Blues. Tell me about these beers in cans. Absolutely. We, uh, we believe that the best package for a craft beer is in a can. There are three enemies when it comes to beer, heat, light, and oxygen. And so we take all of those out of the, out of the question when you put them in a can. Now we have a can and people will say, well, doesn't, is it going to be like the allergy from my dad's like Schlitz can, that PBR can from back in the day? And we say, hell no, because this is a special can. We take this can, comes down a conveyor belt, it gets a shot of CO2, pushes all the oxygen out, it's immediately filled with beer, right to the top. There's another shot of CO2 that cleans off the head, then the lid comes down, and all of a sudden you have this thing, that's a can. It gets put around a purge thing, make sure it doesn't have any leakage, no purge around the outside. It slides through a gamma ray, make sure that everything is all sealed. Now, if it's not sealed, it gets kicked in an employee beer, and that's all right with me. You know what I mean? I get the drink for free. Now, every can that gets passed through gets a shot of spring water on the top of it, and then it gets packaged. It gets shipped out here from Lyons, Colorado. So you have the perfect can the perfect beer, and that's the education behind putting it in the can. Very simply, it's a water-based polymer liner on the inside of the can. So the same beer you got from the bright tank into this can is the same beer you're going to get on your, on your tap in the local restaurant. And what it comes down is the beer is never touching metal. Never, ever touched any metal because of the way it's packaged. And that can, this is a can specifically made for us through the ball company. Cast Canning is the guys who created the machine that helps us can it. And this is, and this is what it's all about. Well, I came in here acting like I didn't know about the beer, but as I told you a little bit earlier this afternoon, I served the old Chubb Scotch Ale at a dinner two or three days ago. And the people, I have to tell you this, the people love the beer, but I did deal with a couple people who said, well, you know what, I'm not used to beer in cans. And my response is you've got to get over the mindset of drinking the, the mass-marketed beers in cans. And when you think of all the, all the advantages that canned beer has, as you mentioned, including where you can sell cans that you can't sell bottles. Absolutely. And the, 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 the thing about a can is um, our shipping cost is down because it's lighter cans. So we're down about 40% as compared to those craft beers that are in the bottle. So we can pass that savings along to the consumer all the way down. And again, this can is the best package for a craft beer. It's not that mass marketed Coors Light in a can. It's not any of that other kind of stuff, not to call those guys out, but Miller Light, Coors Light, Bud Light, all in a can. And here we are, craft beer, and we and it's not not only just a regular craft beer, it's a kick-ass craft beer. Now I had heard, I don't know if this is true or not, maybe you, know, you don't know, but I had heard that originally it was kind of a joke, the idea of, of canning the beer. Absolutely. There was a mass email sent out to all of the craft breweries in America, and they said, they said, here, we think you guys ought to can your beers. It was from Cast Canning, and they were from Alberta, Canada, and people just thought, no way, 99% of the craft people in America threw that email away. Our, our owner, Dale Katechis, put that email on his desk. Him and a fellow partner, Marty Jones, they said, they looked at it day after day for about a week, week and a half, and they said, what do you think? They kept laughing at it, they kept laughing at it, and then finally said, well, let's do some homework on that. Flew out to Chicago, did the study, said, look, this is the way you want to package a beer. They did all the homework that you needed to do, and finally they decided, after all the laughing, the giggling, and the smiling, let's put our beer in a can and here we are today eight nine ten years later and we got a great a great beer we put it in a can and with the beer can it's the it's the canned beer apocalypse is what we call it and what's happening now is that other companies are following your lead they are there are some i, I don't know if it's proper etiquette to name those guys with sly fox some of those other guys are well you just did on, i don't know, I know. If it's probably just did. <laughs> hopping on the bandwagon but what we like to say is that we were the first who did it absolutely well, I'll tell you, and right now you have what, three flavors? We have three flavors here. We have a seasonal, that's our 1050. That's an imperial, a Russian imperial stout, and that'll be ready in November. But the three uh, 
Dale's Pale Ale is our flagship beer. This is named after the owner of the company. Named after the owner, Dale Katechis. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we have the old chub, the one you sampled at your place. This is the Scotch Ale that the, I served. The Scotch Ale that you served. Week, right? Yep. And then we have the Gordon, which is our double IPA, Imperial Red kind of hybrid beer. It's very good beer. Um, and again, we have them all in a can, and that's our thing. How about you pour me a little bit of that old chub? Absolutely. Just for old time's sake, since Absolutely. I had it a couple days ago. And again, what's the alcohol content? About 8%? 8% on the old chub. So it's a, it's a really good beer. It's smooth. It's me with a nice chocolate malt, caramel. It's got a hint of a beechwood malt that we put on the back end of it. Gives it a little roasty feeling, like a cup of coffee. Yep. Well, that's it. And you know what? You can serve this with a dessert, maybe a roasted dish. Absolutely. Like you could serve. We, we actually had that served with a nice cherry pie. Because it came off very well. It was actually like a chocolate covered cherry pie. So it really blended well. It holds up with a good bourbon and a couple of cigars, anything like that. But it, it works very, very well with all your pairings if you can find the right formula at your restaurant. Absolutely. Now, if we have people looking for your beer, how many? You're in quite a few states right now, right? We are. We're in 22, 23 total states. So we should have pretty much coverage. Some of those southern states who have that prohibition law on the books, we can't be there because the alcohol content is too high. I but still we can't get over that. <laughs> it's illegal to sell certain beers in certain states because of the alcohol content. It it's amazing. It is. Some of those southern states, we don't have any coverage. But you can find us here on the East Coast. We got coverage in Southern California. We have coverage in the Midwest. So, yeah, if you're looking for Dale's Pale Ale, Old Chubb, the Gordon, or 1050, we're all over the place. Well, Absolutely, I tell you, Gary. Archie Knight, these are some great beers. Uh, and, again, it took me a little while to get used to the cans, but now that I'm into it, I'll tell you what, you can't argue with the contents inside, Absolutely. Archie. Absolutely. We, we appreciate that. And then we tell everybody, just all you got to do is taste our beer. That's it. Once you, get, once you taste our beer, the whole can thing is blown out of the water. It's totally immaterial. Absolutely. Archie, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Gary. All right, man. <laughs> we have some fancier beer, Absolutely. obviously. Fans. There you go. Fans. And we will see you next time on Still Crazy after all these beers. Let's host one. What do you think, man? Absolutely, brother. All right. Cheers Thank to you, you, brother. Cheers. All right. See you next week. I'm still crazy after all of these beers through the years. Winter, summer, springtime too. Crazy here after all these beers. There is only one for me and you know. You know that I'll always be crazy after all these beers. I'm not showing my boobs. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>